I think the, the sort of the, the, the public is obsessed with the phrase global warming, which is not the problem. I mean, the, the global warming I think is a very misleading phrase because there are other things which are much more important and easier to measure. For example, stratosphere cooling and stratosphere cooling is much larger than global warming. Because global warming is supposed to be a rise in the average ground temperature. The average ground temperature over the Earth is impossible to measure since most of the Earth is ocean and we don't have instruments. So this average ground temperature is a fiction. I mean, nobody knows what it is. There's, there's no way you can measure it. And it, it, it's not particularly important anyway. I mean, what's important is how much rain is going to fall next year, how many hurricanes there are going to be, and how much ozone there's going to be. Well, the stratosphere cooling is something we really know a lot about because that's easy to calculate. It's a direct effect of carbon dioxide which cools the stratosphere just by radiation. It's independent of weather and uh, it's very large. So that's a, a measurable and known effect of the carbon dioxide which can be extremely serious because it immediately affects the ozone. As you cool the stratosphere, you produce more ice crystals in the stratosphere, and that has a very destructive effect on the ozone. We know that the ozone disappeared from the Antarctic over a large region. During the last 20 years, you have this thing called the ozone hole, which appears in the spring in the Antarctic, and it doesn't yet appear in the Arctic. But if the stratosphere of the Arctic gets cooled down, it's likely it's going to happen in the Arctic, and that's, of course, much more serious since it happens as a much larger population within the Arctic regions than there is within the Antarctic. And the Antarctic happens to be uh, essentially uh, empty of people, very fortunately. But when it happens in the Arctic, that's going to be a major disaster if we don't do something about it. So that's my primary concern with the carbon dioxide at the moment. It's not what the public is worrying about. The public thinks that you have to wait until global warming is proved before you do something, and, and because that's completely ridiculous because the other, other effects which are more easily measurable are already happening. Anyway, so that's uh, the kind of thing I'm doing. So I'm not really doing the observation myself, but I'm pushing very hard. And also, since this became a fashionable subject, Jason is also involved with the carbon dioxide and climate. So we did a study on that which we did uh, 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 advise the Department of Energy to put more money into observations. Again, very limited success. The Department of Energy has a little program called ARM, ARM, which stands for Atmospheric Radiation Measurements, which is an excellent program, but it has miserably small amounts of money. And meanwhile, of course, they put huge money into the computer models. So it's an end, it's an uh, it's, it's an end, end, endless fight, but we are making some progress, and I, th I think the understanding of the carbon dioxide problem is still very very far away. We have, especially the links between carbon dioxide and vegetation are very poorly understood, but when you have the understanding, when the measurements have been made. I think we can control the carbon dioxide rather easily because it's a question of land management, essentially. And uh, so the amounts that are involved in the vegetation are so large that if you merely just change some of the forest management practices or do a little more irrigation in some places, and it's quite likely you can absorb all the carbon dioxide you want at, at a cost which is far less than stopping burning coal and oil. So that's essentially what I'm trying to, to understand.